Hello, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed that awesome tune by Mr. Parr as he cranks out another great one. Hopefully, that'll be a tool that you can use to help yourself study for your quizzes and tests. Today's lesson, obviously, is about the muscular system, and the muscular system is the system that works with your bones to help your body move. So, muscles are the major organs in the muscular system, and they cause movement by contracting in one of two ways. We have voluntary contractions, and we have involuntary contractions. Now, we're going to start off with the voluntary contractions first. Voluntary contractions are muscle contractions that you can control. So if you were sitting in class one day and your teacher asked the question, looking for students to participate, you have control of your muscles to either raise your hand or not raise your hand. And if you choose to answer the question, you control your muscles to put your hand up in hopes to get called on. Or if you don't want to answer the question, then you also have the choice to keep your muscles contracted to keep your hands where they are. Our voluntary muscles include one of the major muscle groups called the skeletal muscles. And skeletal muscles are pretty easy to remember because they attach to the skeleton. So if we take a look at this image here, 
This is an image from the bodies exhibit that you can actually see in Manhattan. If you're interested in human biology, this is definitely an exhibit to see. Now, if we zoom in on the forearm down here, you'll notice in the forearm, the red tissue here are the forearm muscles. And if we follow them to the left into the hand, you'll notice that they'll, they'll turn into white, thin, stringy type tissue that then connects to the bone. Now, skeletal muscle cells are also known as striated cells. Striated simply means that the muscle cells are striped. If we take a look at one muscle cell out of the group of the four or five muscle cells that we see here, you'll notice that the muscle cell is striped. Now, the stripe pattern is formed by the contracting units inside of your muscles called sarcomeres. And you'll see a little bit more about how muscles will work together to cause movement in the video clip that we'll see shortly. Now, your muscles work in pairs, okay, because muscles can't contract and then uncontract or relax themselves. So we have to have pairs called flexors and extensors. So let's talk about the difference between the two. Here on the left, I have my muscle group. I have a flexor muscle, which is the bicep muscle. Then on the right, I have my extensor muscle, which is the triceps muscle. Now, flexor muscles kind of easy to remember because if someone asks you to flex your muscles and you lift up your arms and then bend your hands towards your head and then flex your bicep and making your bicep shorter. So flexor muscles are muscles that bend body parts. Okay, so in this picture here, as we can see, the bicep muscle is contracting and getting shorter. As the muscle gets shorter, it'll pull on this tendon here that's attached to your forearm and as a result, it's going to pull the forearm up. Now, once your bicep contracts, it's gonna stay like that until you activate your triceps muscle, which is the extensor. The extensor muscles straighten out body parts. As we can see in the picture here, as your tricep muscle contracts, it gets shorter, and then since it's attached to the top of your forearm, it pulls your forearm down to straighten out your arm. And that's why it's called an extensor muscle because it extends the arm. Now, other examples of flexor and extensor muscles can be found inside the leg. Okay, flexor muscles would be your hamstrings. Those are the muscles that would contract to bend your leg. So if you were ready to kick a soccer ball, your hamstring muscles contract to pull your leg back. And then to strike the ball, your quadricep muscles, the muscles on the top of your leg, will then contract to extend your leg to force your foot through the soccer ball to drive it, to kick it as hard as you possibly can into the goal. Now, we can't have our muscles pull on our bones if they're not connected to our bones by something. And our bones are connected to our muscles by strong bands of tissue called tendons. As you can see in this diagram here, here you have the muscle, which is your bicep muscle, and it's attached to the bone in your shoulder joints by tendons and also to your forearms by tendons. If our muscles weren't attached to the bones, they can contract all they want, but the bones wouldn't do anything because there'd be nothing to pull on them. Now, as I said, tendons are connective tissue that attach muscles to bones. In the last section, we talked about how ligaments connect bones to bones, but tendons connect muscles to bones. One easy way to remember that is if you go down your leg to the heel of your foot and you move up just a little bit above your heel, you'll feel this tough thing in the back of your leg. That thing that you're feeling is called the Achilles tendon. And if you run your finger from your heel, up that tendon, you'll notice that it'll go right into your calf muscle. So at the top of your Achilles tendon, you have a muscle, and as you run down your Achilles tendon, it attaches to the bone. So if you ever get confused between a ligament and a tendon, find your Achilles tendon and run your finger up and down the Achilles tendon, and the tendon will show you that it attaches the, your calf muscle to the bone of your heel. Now we're going to move on to our second group of muscles called involuntary muscles. Now we said earlier that voluntary muscles are muscles that you can control, but involuntary muscles are muscles that you cannot control. They are automatic. They do things on their own without thinking. There are some muscles in your body that can do both, such as your diaphragm. Your diaphragm is a muscle that sits at the bottom of your rib cage, and that's the muscle that's responsible for allowing your body to draw air in and forcing air out, helping us breathe. So if I were to ask you to take a deep breath 
Everyone can inhale and fill their lungs up. And if I said to exhale, you can all force the air out on command. Now your diaphragm can be involuntary too. It's happening right now. As you're listening to and watching this vodcast, your diaphragm is contracting and relaxing causing you to breathe to make sure your lungs get the air that needs to get sent out to your cells. Now, one type of involuntary muscle tissue that we have is muscle tissue called cardiac tissue. Now, cardiac tissue is unique because it's only found in one spot in your body and it's found inside of your heart. It's a good thing that cardiac tissue that's found in our heart is involuntary because, well, we never have to think about making sure that our heart is doing this. Imagine having to make sure that you had to think about your heart contracting and relaxing every day to make sure your heart beats to pump the blood out. What else could you do? You couldn't talk to a friend. You couldn't think about math work. You couldn't type on Facebook to your friends because you wouldn't be formulating a thought of what to write to your friends because you're too busy thinking about your heart. Your cardiac tissue is tissue that, that contracts involuntarily throughout the day, every day, every year for the rest of your life. And just like our skeletal tissue, our cardiac tissue is also striated, so cardiac tissue does have that striping to it. Now the last type of muscle tissue that we're gonna to discuss today is called smooth muscle tissue, and it's found in the blood vessels, but it's also found in your intestines as well. Your breakfast or your lunch, depending on, or dinner, depending on when you're watching this, is currently being forced throughout your digestive tract through the contractions of smooth muscle to make sure that your, your food gets to the stomach and then forced out of the stomach into the small intestine. Small intestine is going to contract some more to force all the undigested food down through the pathway and then into your large intestine. So let's take a look at our blood vessels though. Here's a picture of an artery. An artery is a big, thick vessel that carries blood away from the heart. And in the middle here, this yellow stuff that you see here, this is just a diagram of showing what these cholesterol deposits can do to an artery pathway. So these yellow cholesterol deposits, as you can tell, are blocking the flow of the blood, which can cause a heart attack, and the de deprivation of blood and nutrients to certain tissues can cause tissue death. As we take a look on the outside of this artery here, we'll see the smooth muscle tissue lining the outside of the vessel to give it some strength so it doesn't rupture when the heart is beating and pumping out blood at extremely high pressures. Now, the reason why it's called smooth muscle tissue is because it's the opposite of striated tissue. Smooth muscle tissue is also known as non-striated tissue. And if we take a look at it, non-striated tissue is exactly what it sounds like. It's non-striated. Remember earlier how we talked about striated tissue is striped tissue. So I always remembered this when I was learning about the muscle system that striated tissue sounded like striped, but it also, because it looks striped, it looked like it was bumpy. Whereas a smooth muscle tissue doesn't have any of that striping, so it looks smooth. It doesn't look like it has a lot of ridges on it. So that's hopefully one trick you can use in order to remember the difference between striated tissue and smooth muscle tissue. Now let's watch a video from the Pushing the Limits Human Body series on strength. And this is gonna show you how powerful our muscles actually can be when we need them. The Sandia Mountains in New Mexico test many climbers. The granite faces are notoriously unstable. A little steep here. Mark was in front, and I lost my footing just a little. And by instinct to catch myself, I reached over and put my hands on the wall. And that's when all hell broke loose. The wall essentially came off in my hands. This thing was huge. And how it didn't crush him to death, I don't know, but I, I just watched him and I couldn't believe he was actually still alive. The rock slab has trapped Sinjin. It could crush his ribs, but with his arm muscles, he's able to hold it off, but only just. Worse, he's on a sloping ledge. He's sliding toward a high cliff and doom. stunned and in shock, but his body has gone into overdrive. Sinjin's survival depends on what's locked in the muscles of his arms, chest, and shoulders.
But how can mere muscles move something that massive? Muscle tissue works by contracting, pulling on bone, using it like a lever. These contractions occur microscopically. Each of Sinjin's muscles has thousands of individual fibers, bundled like wires in a cable. As we age, muscles may get bigger or smaller, but we're born with every muscle fiber we'll ever have. Within each fiber are yet smaller filaments. To activate the muscle, chemicals trigger neighboring filaments to ratchet together, intermeshing like locked fingers. As they slide past each other, the whole muscle fiber shortens. These contractions drive all our muscle movement. Yet the big surprise is that most of us use only about a third of our muscle fibers at any one time, even when we feel we exert ourselves. It's the way our muscles deliver power most efficiently. But if Sinjin's going to stay alive, he has to do something different and move a rock weighing more than half a ton. He's unleashed all the power in his muscles. Sinjin heaved a boulder weighing 1,200 pounds, one and a half times the world bench press record. Under normal circumstances, there's no way I would have been able to lift that rock even a little bit, let alone lift it all the way off of my body. Sinjin, don't move! Don't move! Don't move! Ah, injured! Sinjin could do the impossible because his brain activated all the fibers in his muscles at the same time. The resulting power was so great, he risked ripping muscle from bone. But in a flash of instinct, Sinjin's brain made a life-saving decision, triggering every single fiber in his arm and shoulder muscles. Together, they fired in one violent push. Most people can't consciously or voluntarily make their muscles do that. It usually requires some unique situation. An emergency is a perfect example of a situation where you need a great amount of force. Your body synchronizes instantaneously and you get this huge burst. I want to call for some help. Okay? That power carries a cost. In saving his own life, Sinjin severely hurt his arm muscles. With the level of pain that I was realizing that I was in, there was blood everywhere. Uh, you know, things were ugly. Not going anywhere, right? But he survived. Okay, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that video clip. That concludes tonight's lesson on the muscles. Thank you so much for your time. Boom! Bang, 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 bang! Bang, bang, bang! Bang, bang! Bang, bang! Do I need to put my email address in here?